Here we go. Saturday Night Knicks. The music has been hit. Because after an embarrassing effort last night against the Mavs, Knicks came into Detroit, came in for business, and took care of business right away. Led by Julius Randle, Reggie Bullock. Knicks went out to a 14-0 lead and did not look back. Knicks starters beat the Detroit starters 39-1 in the first quarter. Knicks scored 41 first quarter points, nine three-pointers, and 20 points by Julius Randle. And that was pretty much it, man. This game was a no contest. Knicks win by 44 points. 44 points and made quick work out of the new Detroit Pistons. 25 and 25 on the campaign. Knicks even it up. And yeah, man, salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you, boy. CP in the building on the solo dolo for right now. Ashy is uh, doing SNY and will be joining late later. CK's off tonight. Salute to everybody in the chat, man. Hit that thumbs up button for you, boy. Nick's post game live presented by Manscaped, number one show for the fans by the fans. And uh, what what do we take away? From a win like this, well, the, the what we take away is you you wish you could be playing the Detroit Pistons every night, because it was that easy for the Knicks. But you know what? Listen, you know the the Pistons they're a bad team. We know that worst team in the East, but they have been playing better. But what we can take away is a couple of things. Number one, your top dog set the tone, and that was Julius Randle. Julius came out from the beginning. He came out with energy. He was poised. He was under composure. He let the game come to him, and he took care of business. 29 points for Julius. Highly efficient game. 9 of 16 from the field. 5 of 9 from downtown. 8 boards, 3 dimes as well. So I thought Julius set a great, great tone. Secondly, Reggie Bullock. Got to call Reggie Bullock to the stage, man. We, we dog him out for, for not showing up in the second half. We know how he gets off to his hot starts. Bullock put together a complete game. 22 points, 6 of 10 from downtown, along with five boards. So Bullock chipped in and, and had a complete game for this team, which was good to see. You know, Julius and Bullock have that chemistry going, man. We always see how they start the game off. They always get into that 1-2 game with each other. And tonight it paid off, you know, again, against the Pistons, but tonight it paid off. An interesting stat going into this game, shout out my guy Tommy D for putting me on to this, because I was wondering, because every time we see Bullock and, and Randall having that chemistry, I want to know how many um, assists does, does uh, Randall account for on, in Bullock's makes. Bullock accounts for 43% of Randall's dimes, and he's shooting 41% from three. And 44% from two. So we put the numbers together with the eye test, and, and that's what you see, man. They had the chemistry going, and they were locked in. So good job by Bullock putting a complete game together. Definitely wanted to see that. What are you, Another thing you could take away, and again, yes, it was the Pistons, but another thing you could take away was the ball movement. The ball movement was crisp from beginning to end. And you know what? Got to give him credit. We dog him when, when it's due. I give credit when it was due. I thought Peyton made a concerted effort to swing the ball, look for others before he looked for his typical drives to the rim. And I thought that also helped us out a lot early in this game. I thought Peyton was looking to dish. He would finish with a team high, nine assists, 11 points, nine assists for Peyton. So I thought, I thought Peyton moving the ball was nice. RJ got the ball moving here and there. Julius was definitely moving it. I thought the off-ball action was good between RJ, Peyton, Bullock. They were moving well without the ball. So the offense just had a bit more spirit to it. Knicks got out to a 14-0 run. 39-1. Knicks starters outscored the Detroit starters in that first quarter. 41 first quarter points for the Knicks. Nine threes. I think they would finish with 15 on the night. Eight, 19 on the night. Correction. 19 on the night. Because in garbage time, Kevin Obi started filling it up. So it was a good effort. 20 first quarter points by Randall. Overall, good effort. I thought the defense was crisp. Between Noel and Taj, I thought they manned the paint very well. Noel, Noel finished with four blocks. Taj chipped in with two, two steals. So I thought defensively they were crisp in, in guarding the paint. 
Perimeter defense was also solid between Peyton and RJ. I think I thought they did their thing, Bullock as well. So they took care of business, man. You wish you could play the Pistons every night, but they took care of business and got back on track. Took care of business and got back on track. Garbage time. OB did okay. You know, OB came out and got some more confidence than in garbage time. Kev came in, started started lighting it up. We get uh, three for three from downtown for, for Kev. So that was solid. How about Norvell Pell? Norvell Pell comes in in garbage time. Dislocates his finger on a on an alley oop attempt. They the medical staff comes in, tape him up. He comes back, he shoots his free throws, comes back on the other end, gets two quick blocks on one possession, and then gets it out to Kev, who would uh who would put the nail in the coffin with a final three pointer. So it was a team effort, all in all. Everybody got in. Everybody played. The whole bench played. So give credit to Tibbs. Uh, the, the, everybody played in this game. You know, you got the situationals in there. Frank, Kev, OB got in there. You, you, you had a Pinson sighting, Jared Harper. So, hey, it was, a, it, was a, it was a party affair. It was a family affair down in Detroit. So Knicks get back on track. 25 and 25 on the campaign. We know that uh, Brooklyn is lurking. So you just got to go in and take care of business. And I thought they did that. They did that well. Julius led it. Bullock. RJ was, RJ was okay. You know, 14 points, 5 or 7 from the field, 3 or 4 from uh, the free throw line, one, 1 for 1 from downtown. You know, I, th- I thought because Julius and, and Peyton really dominated the ball, you didn't really see RJ get too, too many looks. Also didn't look too confident on, on some of his uh, mid-range jumpers and drive attempts, but he still finished on with an efficient night. Still still defended well. Finished with 14 points, 5 or 7 from the field. And as I said, we dogged Peyton, but Peyton uh, came in and, and started swinging the ball around, and I thought, you know, he set a good tone offensively. So you got everything you wanted. You wanted to see them come out on the second night of a back-to-back with energy, bounce back. After an embarrassing effort last night against the Mavericks. And they did that. Took care of business. Wire to wire win. And didn't look back. Pistons were able to cut it to 17 midway through the game. But it really wasn't a threat. Uh, I mean, you you look at the guys on this court. You don't really see uh, much of a team here. Ash, what's, what's going on? How you feeling? What you think about um, the Nick game tonight? Listen, it's it's one of those games where I'm not overly impressed because you're supposed to beat up on teams like these. Mm-hmm. But I'm also excited because it's much needed. And I think it's needed for a bunch of different reasons. Obviously, Julius Randle needed a really good game to kind of get his back, his head back in the game and things like that. Um, I think he was kind of in his own head. Um, also, I think the team as a whole needed it. They just needed a win to lift their yeah. spirits up, to get that continuity flow, to get the defense flowing again, to get the offense clicking again. This was just the, a game that was really, really good for the ego. And um, it was much needed because had we lost this one, you know, the floodgates would have just opened Man, up. listen, <laughs> and I, I would have led the charge, as I'm telling you. But as, as you said, you know, Detroit is is barely an NBA team, but I just took away certain themes. And, and it's good to see them get back on track. The energy was there on both ends. Julius led the charge, started the game off and ended it well. 29 points for him. Very efficient night. Him and Bullock had the chemistry going. So it was just good to see them get back on track. Good for the ego good for the for the overall ball team is. psyche and overall just just moving the ball again because the offense had been stuck in the mud for a number of games as we said coming into tonight's game they were averaging like 94 points in like their last five games so they had to step that up and if there was a team to do that against it was the pistons 44 yeah. point win by the knicks one of their i think their largest in franchise history so that that was uh Good to see, man. Definitely. It's good it's to see. no, I think it's their yeah, it's their largest. That was one of our largest wins since nineteen ninety six. So yeah. um it was it was it it's one for the record books, that's for sure. But yeah. again, it just goes ahead and just speaks to sometimes you just need these wins. These wins just kind of set you back on the right track and um that's what tonight was you know I'm not gonna make too much out of it again you're supposed to beat up on teams like these the Pistons are last in the east they're the second worst team in the NBA behind the Timberwolves so this is something that you're supposed to go ahead and you know you're supposed to put this win in your column but 
you still need it when you're, you're coming off a three game losing streak. True. You know what I mean? True story. True story. Let's go to Ron from Jersey. Ron, how you feeling? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm right back with you again, ZP. Uh, <laughs> everybody, good. shoot that thumb up for everybody in, in the chat room. <laughs> Let's get it. Listen, <laughs> I, I want to say tonight, it was a great win. Yeah. Tip to somebody, or Ashley did the job and got the message through. <laughs> because Tiggs played tonight like we discussed he should do yesterday. Yeah. He really put put it out there tonight like we said he should be doing. Yeah. Everybody got a little play in time. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. was ready to play. Mm-hmm. And this is what we got to do. We got to, we got to, these games are very important. And we got to, we got to be ready for every game. Yeah. It's no more taking off. You can't take off no more. No and that's all I want to say. Appreciate it, Ron. You know, and um, just one more thing, one more thing. Uh, don't worry about Brooklyn. We're not worrying about Brooklyn. Yeah. You know, I, I'm from Jersey. Uh, the wasn't. Nets was my team, still is my team. But I love, I love all my New York team. No doubt. I'm a New Yorker. I love all my New York team. All right. So. Like I said, tomorrow or Monday, when they go up against each other, we're going to have the house rocking for the Knicks. Yeah, and they... we got to come through. We got to sh- make them respect us. Put some respect on our name. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Appreciate it, Ron. Appreciate it, man. Ron calling with that energy. He came out like the Knicks tonight in Detroit. 44-point win. Let's go back to the phones. My guy Cass Leo Jr. in the building. Cass, how you feeling, bro? Checking in from Shaolin. What's going on? I'm good. Good. I'm good, CP. CP, thank you for taking my call. Yeah. Ashley, how are you? And I'm congratulations good. How are you? on your SNY. I'm good. Thank I'm good. You. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. I got I have a lot of thoughts right now. Just just listen to the early callers. Mm-hmm. But one thing I just want to highlight, the fact that Tibbs took the initiative to allow the entire team to hit the floor. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering mm-hmm. Moving forward, it, it, it's promising right now. We're going to make the playoffs. I, I'm, I'm feeling confident about that. And if, and if not, then a playing pos, uh, position. Mm-hmm. But is it, is it, is it an idea for Tibbs to see what he could work with, with everyone? I'm talking about Kevin Knox shooting the three. I'm yeah. talking about, you know, IQ of course. You know, uh, leading the second unit with his energy. D Rose. Um, he does look a little a little slow, but I think he's going to recover um, in the right time and with, with the treatment and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And and just just seeing just seeing all the possible options and weapons that we can use in the long run because we one one of the, one of the main things that I was nervous about for the second half of the season was the amount of minutes that RJ Julius and you know the the starting five was getting first half on. Yeah, and now. Given given that we might make the playoffs, I think I think um, it's time for Tibbs to become flexible and, and yeah. exercise the rest of the the rest of the team. Uh, well, here's what he said, and appreciate the call, man. People in the chat said Cass had his librarian voice on. My man was was he he was low with it. <laughs> but, so it's almost midnight. That was his sexy yeah, voice. My man, yeah, I, t- I think that was for you, Ash. I think that was for you. Like you ever you ever listen to the radio late at night? Yeah, yeah, that was a quiet storm. He had his quiet storm voice. On. <laughs> Chuck Chuck know what it is. Um, but you know it was interesting because I was listening to the the post game press conference and it came up. It was a topic of conversation for Tibbs in terms of just playing the bench and, and getting them out there with the lead so large. And this was Tibbs' answer. He was basically saying like, "No lead is safe," and especially in this league when teams are jacking up thirty five, forty threes a game. You know, this is why he keeps his starters in for a, a while, just to make sure that they go away with the win. Again, that's his answer, not mine, but that's that's his answer. He also has said that he likes to keep the rotations the way that they are because he wants to keep guys, you know, keep the chemistry going and, and keep guys together. So this is why he goes to a short eight, nine man rotation to make sure things are together. I would like to see Kev get more minutes, of course. If Frank, if there's an opportunity to get Frank in there, of course you'd like to see it. But 
I think these mm-hmm. are these are the eight nine guys that you're gonna see going into from now until you know they get into whether it's the playoffs or playing game what have you. I think that's just you know I think this is the core that you're gonna see. This is just Tibbs's philosophy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know necessarily if the chemistry can only be obtained by using the same rotation or this. Yeah. I, I feel like when you're on a team with guys and at some point you will all play together, I don't think you need to like beat a dead horse and have them play consistently to establish that chemistry. I think it comes naturally when you have a group of guys who stay together. That's the key. Chemistry from a team doesn't always come from who hits the floor together. It also comes just staying together. That's why when you start changing that equation, you see it throws off the whole equilibrium of a team. So, I mean, I understand what he's saying in a degree, but I also think that switching it up is good because switching it up, you know, the it helps throw your the other team off their balance. It, they, it throws them off the game plan that they came into that game with because they thought you were going to do one thing. Now you're doing something else. And that was one of my critiques of Tibbs last show is that he's too predictable sometimes. And that predictability is what makes it easy to defeat him. And good coaches are able to switch it up when need be. And Tibbs needs to go ahead and do that more. It's, it's just beneficial for what this team is trying to do. 